what is up you guys so in this one we're going to see how to invert a matrix without really inverting it so for that we're going to be using recipes or tools that we learned previously on this course entitled numerical analysis and methods instead of you know taking a matrix computing its inverse using the known formula one over determinant of a multiplied by the adjunct of a transpose instead we're going to consider the following function f of x where x is a matrix that is defined by i minus a times x and why am i considering this function in particular because notice that f of a inverse is i minus a times a inverse is i minus i is zero what does that mean it means that f of x admits a inverse as a root okay so we're talking about roots now and we've learned previously that to solve systems as such we can apply newton right so let's see how newton is applied here we've seen in the previous lecture that newton could be applied to vector type functions that is we could actually let's start with 1d in 1d a simple 1d function f of x equal to zero no vectors no matrices is solved as such xn plus one is xn minus fxn over f prime of xn right and nd that is if f is an n-dimensional vector right both x and f are vectors this is solved as such xn plus one vector is xn vector minus d at xn inverse where d is, is the matrix of partial derivatives multiplied by f xn vector vector right now in n by n dimensional that is when x is a matrix right now x is a matrix and you're solving a matrix valued function stuff are really similar that is we're going to be using the following xn plus one matrix right is xn matrix minus f prime of xn matrix inverse times fxn now what is our function over here it's this guy right so let's try to see what we get with f of x is i minus ax so if i do the following f prime of x you can easily verify for matrix valued functions that this guy is minus a so f prime of x n no matter what x is you get minus a so f prime of x n inverse is minus a inverse so if i plug this guy back here along with f right here what i get is xn plus one matrix is xn matrix minus minus we get a plus a inverse right multiplied by this function which we usually refer to as the residual so it's i minus a x be careful that it's evaluated at n so it's xn but there's a problem here actually there's a very big problem over here <laughs> And what is it? It's because here you've got a inverse. So what are you doing over here? You're actually at each iteration, you're using the inverse of a, which is why we're here. We're at Newton to compute a inverse without really computing the inverse explicitly. But using Newton's method, we are faced with the inverse. So what do we do over here? There is a trick for that. There's a very, 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 very smart trick for that. And I find it amazing that it works. It's fascinating. <laughs> every time you think of it, every time you take a look at it you say wow these kind of stuff actually work and they make sense if we run this on matlab you will converge to something very close to the inverse but how do we explain xn plus 1 intuitively xn plus 1 is seen as the n plus 1 estimate of a inverse no well since it's an estimate then why not replace a inverse by xn which is the most recent estimate at iteration number n so if we do this then all what happens is that this expression xn plus one is xn plus the inverse of a we replace it by the most recent estimate which is matrix xn into i minus a xn okay so let's iterate over this on matlab and see if we indeed converge to something close to the inverse or not now let's define a function called Newton inverse and within this function I will output my iterations x and will input a the matrix dimensions and the number of iterations let's call i the identity matrix because we're going to use it as part of the Newton method expression says and we're going to have the true inverse which we're not going to use we're only going to be using it of course we're not going to be using it if we use it it's not going to make sense that uh, we have a method that computes the inverse 
inverse without knowing the inverse. Uh, we're going to be use it to evaluate the error. We're going to be plotting the error. Okay. Um, so the error and one last thing we're going to define X over here is a three dimensional matrix. The first two dimensions refer to X N and the last dimension is just stacking each X N matrix. So we need three dimensions. Um, we're going to initialize this guy by say a transpose divided by the norm of a. So the infinite norm of a, if you don't know, if I take one, two, three, and four, and I compute the so-called infinite norm of a, it's seven. And why is that? It's because you take a look at the maximum per column. The maximum per column is three, and here it's four. You add them up, you get seven. So let's do another example. You take here 49, and you compute the infinite norm. You get 52. Three plus 49 is 52. So this is a good initializer in case you want to run it for different matrices. And now keep in mind, this is the first iteration. So I'm going to go two till number of iterations, and I'm going to just apply the formula. Xn is Xn minus one plus plus as the formula is saying Xn multiplied by this residual. So Xn minus one. Um, notice here that we have n n plus one, and I wrote here n and n minus one. So if this guy is n minus one, this guy should be n minus one right here. So multiplied by i minus a times Xn minus one. Okay. And I'm going to compute the error function. That is norm of Xn minus the true inverse. Okay. Which is a inverse. And we're going to be plotting this for matrices. I mean, we're not going to plot the first element and the second element, and it's going to get crowded, it's going to get messy. Instead, we're going to summarize our goodness of this iteration through one number which is the error, the norm of xn minus the true inverse, a inverse, square, and Frobenius norm, which makes sense. Now, as a benchmark, um, I'm going to use the LU decomposition to compute the inverse. By this, I mean I'm going to decompose my matrix as L times U. So at this point, we have L times U, where L is lower triangular and A is upper triangular. And I'm going to compute the inverse using LU using the following, because, you know, A inverse could be computed as since a is l times u then a inverse is u inverse times l inverse this is another efficient let's say it's more efficient than computing the inverse of a since l and u have some structure lower and upper so exploiting this we get this um and likewise i'm going to compute an error on the LU decomposition is just a number. We didn't iterate over here. It's just a number. So I'll be taking this matrix right here and comparing it with a true inverse. Okay. Now that we have everything, we have a test. We have a test bench. We have inverting a matrix without really inverting it. <laughs> so using Newton's method, right? Uh, last thing I'm going to plot. Okay. So what am I going to plot right here? I'm going to open a figure and on a logarithmic scale, I'm going to plot my error in black using a line width of two. Okay. I'll hold on. I'll do the same. Same thing with my LU type error. Um, plot it in dashed red. Okay. And on the X label, I'll say iteration or nth iteration. On the Y label, I'll say error in log scale. And I'll place a legend saying the first error is using Newton. And the second one is using MATLAB's LU decomposition. Now, of course, inherently MATLAB is what I think. Okay. And then we'll place some grids just for, okay, now I'm going to define my main function and let's define a matrix which is a random Gaussian matrix size three by three of which is zero mean and variance square root of and variance 50 square. Okay. I'm going to define, let's say 30 iterations and I'm going to run my Newton inverse passing it a n and n number of iterations. I didn't define n. Well, n is size of a three So running this. There you go. Actually, LU did a really good job at the, you know, I ah, no, I did a mistake. I want so having in mind to have a line of over here and what did I plot oh so over here I should multiply this guy by number of ones vector number of iteration so that when I run again there you go um each time I'm generating a different matrix I didn't fix a seed so each time you will see a different plot and that's good to experiment run again here there's no red because uh, LU just hit the exact inverse so that the error is exactly zero, which is good. We're doing a good job at the 15th iteration. We drop 17th, we're good. All right, we're at a really low error. Run again, there you go. There is a difference between LU and ours, but it's really nice to see that you actually converge to the true inverse, no matter what the matrix is. Well, if the matrix is close to singularity, then you start having problems, right? Because you don't have an inverse. Run again. There you, you're really, you're really with LU.
there is a very tiny difference around 0.2 db 0.1 0 0.08 db i mean and it always has this nice looking shape it's always a waterfall right run again there you see yeah let's experiment with higher dimensions run here's a four by four matrix random matrix run with a 10 by 10 matrix let's see what we get and there you go this is really cool you don't need the inverse to compute the inverse something really nice to know okay so that's about it in this lecture we've seen how to compute the inverse without actually computing the inverse and a matlab implementation of our approach so thanks for watching if you found this lecture beneficial please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel any suggestions you have you're free you're welcome to leave them down in the comment section below i take a look into all comments i value them and try to adapt my lectures accordingly i'll see you in the next one